Check that out, the audio is banging. Look at how good I look. Look at how awesome the setup is, man. It's almost like I live indoors. This book sucks, man. And I'm kind of even ashamed to bring it up. Look at that, this, uh, this one, right. The Curious Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. A Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This book really blows, man, and partly because you know how it ends, so skip over here if you don't want me to spoil the book for you. Okay, Dr. Jekyll is Mr. Hyde. That's like, for some reason they keep, I mean this was printed, published in like the late 1800s. So it's got that like old Victorian slang in it. There's a little bit of that, but not so much to completely throw you off of the trail here. But yeah, it's just like, you know, boring 1800s flow, yada yada. And this book just like drags trying to keep the uh, the secret hush hush. And you've got all these like Ned Flanders ass characters who are just completely do-gooders. So, like the bro, um, Utterson, he's Jekyll's lawyer. He ends his day by like sitting with some like Biblical exegesis. Am I saying that word right? Exegesis? 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 Exegesis. You know, some like how to be a Christian book. And then when the church bell that he lives next to strikes 12, he goes to sleep. And then when the church bell strikes 6, he wakes up and he takes a walk with his best friend who neither of them seem like they're having a great time, but they just love their walks together. And they're outside of this house that looks in shambles. And the one guy's like, oh, do you know who lives there or what's going on? And bro, Utterson doesn't tell him that it's uh, Dr. Jekyll's spot. Like the entire book, bro is at this crossroads where there seems to be something very wrong with Dr. Jekyll. And instead of like getting to the bottom of it, probably helping his friend survive, he decides, oh, it's best to just keep my head in the sand as if that's some kind of moral thing. And I understand not wanting to talk about people behind their back. I understand wanting to keep, you know, mind one's own business. But when it comes to like helping your friend who you think, like he literally thinks Hyde is trying to murder Dr. Jekyll because written in the will is that if Dr. Jekyll dies or mysteriously disappears, all of his stuff goes to Mr. Hyde. Uh, as his lawyer, he probably has some reason to like, want to know more and make sure that things are on the up and up. But no, he doesn't do that. He figures, oh, it's best I just mind my own business and just make sure my side of the street is clean. Trust me, you're spotless, but probably help your friend. But there are two like uh, quotes in this book that really serve as the moral um, poles. These quotes have to do with like sticking your beak in other people's interest. The idea being that you shouldn't. And you never asked about the place with the door? Asked Mr. Utterson. No, sir, I had a delicacy, was the reply. I feel very strongly about putting questions. It partakes too much of the style of the day of judgment. You start a question and it's like starting a stone. You sit quietly on the top of a hill and away the stone goes, starting off others and presently some bland old bird, the last you would have thought of, is knocked on the head in his own back garden and the family have to change their name. No, sir, I make it a rule of mine. The more it looks like Queer Street, the less I ask. A very good rule too, said the lawyer. And I was like, yeah, all right, I get, I get, I get what you're saying. You know, I'm, I, I low key do the same thing for the most part. But that was between the lawyer and his friend. The last part is between um, Jekyll's friend. Now Jekyll asks dude to get him some of this like powders and potions and like set it up and he'll send a guy over to pick it up. And the guy happens to be Hyde, who at this point everyone has seen like murder a guy. But he's like, yeah, all right, let me get that stuff. And he takes it and he puts the little potion together, right? He turns to his homie and he says, and now, said he, to settle what remains, Will you be wise? Will you be guided? Will you suffer me to take this glass in my hand and to go forth from your house without further parley? Or has the greed of curiosity too much command of you? Think before you answer, for it shall be done as you decide. As you decide, you shall be left as you were before and neither richer nor wiser, unless the sense of service rendered to a man in mortal distress may be counted as a kind of richness of the soul. Or if you shall so prefer to choose a new province of knowledge and new avenues of fame and power shall be laid open to you here in this room upon the instant, and your sight shall be blasted by a prodigy to stagger the unbelief of Satan. 
And then his homie's like, man, get on with it. What are you, what are you gonna do? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't say either way, but he takes the potion and turns into Jekyll. So I, I kind of went out of order. Let me just give you a brief uh, pricey of what happens in case you haven't seen any of the movies. All of Jekyll's friends are all like straight laced, like nice guys. They all freaking know that Dr. Jekyll has this younger friend named Mr. Hyde who looks like the, when people look at this guy, they instantly want to kill him. You know, that's, that's gotta be some kind of like magical power. So the lawyer and his buddy are walking and his buddy tells the lawyer by this time he saw Hyde stomp over a girl. And then he paid the damages using Dr. Jekyll's check. Everyone assumed it would have been um, a forgery, but it wasn't. And Jekyll's like, yeah, that's my guy, Hyde. I'm kind of like, you know, working with this young man, yada, yada. He's kind of hush-hush about it. Go, Hyde goes in through like the uh, the back of the house that, that his house used to be owned by a surgeon. So like he uses the surgeon's, uh, what do you call that, auditorium, you know what I mean? Like in the Nick. He uses that as like his laboratory. And then the rest of his house with the servants and all, that's where Dr. Jekyll goes and stuff and yada, yada, okay. So one day Hyde and some old guy are walking and Hyde beats the old man to death seemingly for no reason. So. Hyde has a murder beef, and Jekyll's like, I denounce that guy, you'll never see him again, blah, blah, blah. Jekyll starts to be out some more, everyone sees him around, good guy, but then suddenly he stops showing up so much, he stays indoors, and he tells everybody, I gotta, gotta be indoors for a minute, so just, you know, hang tight. But that never changes, eventually he never leaves his little auditorium, and his servants just give him food, like, through the slats or something, like, they would leave it at the door, and he picks it up later, but the servant noticed that it sounds like Hyde in there, kind of going through it emotionally. Doesn't sound like Jekyll at all. So he brings her to Mr. Utterson, the lawyer, and they have some kind of like, um, oh, we must, we must confront him and blah, blah, blah. And they bust down the door and Hyde is like, freaking wait a minute, man. But they bust down the door and Hyde takes some swig of potion and he, he dies from it because it was like a bad batch. And the last two chapters are like explanation of what happened. So the thing that happened was Jekyll takes some potion, he concocts and he turns into Hyde and he feels, you know, younger, more vibrant, but like way shorter. Like he's like shorter and uglier, but he feels better. He starts to live more and more as Hyde when he takes the potion. When the potion wears off, he goes to sleep, he wakes up. It's Dr. Jekyll. But eventually he gets so into like doing these bad deeds that make him feel better because this is kind of like the dark side of his id, the, the side of him that he suppresses is this evil Mr. Hyde. And he says in the explanation that the potion has nothing to do with him being Mr. Hyde. He assumed that it was his mindset because his mindset was one of greed and if he had probably came with better intentions, his transformation may have been to a more pleasant version of himself. That, of course, is theory, whatever. At the same time I'm reading this, I'm also reading Picture of Dorian Gray, which is like an infinitely better book. Oscar Wilde is a freaking um, aestheticist. Like, this is also something of a morality play. But the most important thing about this book is that it be entertaining as you read it, because that's what books are for. So every page of this book has a punchline in it. It's just like, it's like watching Pulp Fiction. That's what this reminds me of. This is like 12 Angry Men or uh, what's another unwatchable movie? Primer? <laughs> I like Primer. Like it took me longer to read this book than Boosie's book, right? And this is 50 pages. This doesn't even count as an, this is a, maybe a novella. It's a freaking short story. And it just drags like hell. What was I getting at? Getting off topic, good job booktuber, friggin'. Because he's expressing this side of himself too much, now this side is taking over, and instead of waking up as Dr. Jekyll, he finds himself waking up now as Mr. Hyde and needing to take the potion to become Dr. Jekyll. Uh, as the moral of the story, you keep your bad traits suppressed or whatever. But then he tries to like make more of the potion, but the specific salt that he ordered doesn't work anymore because the original batch was tainted with what he doesn't know. So now he's like low-key stuck as Mr. Hyde and can't transform back. So when he took that swig at the end, it was it was something that he 
I don't know. I don't. I didn't. I'm not a. I'm not a chemist. I don't know what the heck happened. He just died, and the book was over. So it's clearly a one-star book, right? You take it how you want. If if I'm wrong, please let me know. Like li like seriously, you know me. If you write something down there and like, if you're like a spurt from 4chan and you're like, oh you dumb, you don't know the Jekyll and Hyde, let me know. I'll gladly argue with you. Yeah, this book is ass. Follow me, I'm funny, and I'm better than everyone else. I'm better than Katie Books. I'm better than um, Leone. I'm better than, um, I don't know. I don't know any booktubers. I don't, I don't watch booktube like that. But I'm better than all of them, right? I'm Thug Notes now. Okay, bye. You know what the most dangerous thing in America is, right?